Hey guys, welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we are going to be getting ourselves infinite creative flight, and also we're going to become a yo yo master. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, today we're going to get into deep mob learning. Um, and we're really going to push deep mob learning to its like full potential. Um, and we're going to be getting a glitch set of armor so that way we have permanent flight. We can kind of remove this armor. Um, even though I absolutely love this armor, you can see how much health we actually gain from this armor. But having a set that gives us flight when really in this pack there's not too much to fight um, is a good thing. I mean, but the but to be honest, the, the, the tool, the weapon that we're about to make, the yo-yo we're about to make, which kind of spoilers the yo-yo, um, is very, very powerful. Um, and yeah, you're going to find out why it's very powerful once we start making this thing. So, you're going to need to craft yourself a yo-yos and you book. To do this, it may be confusing, you need to make yourself cord, which is actually just string crafted like so, and you're going to need the materials in you. This is going to be your guide to everything yo-yos. Um, so, I'm going to go over what I prefer to have on my yo-yo in particular. Um, I did do some experimenting on my live stream, and I was able to kind of figure out what probably was the best option, at least in my case. Um, and then I'm going to show you, because this thing can pretty much one shot almost anything. Um, it's it's kind of insane what you can actually do with this. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. And uh, well, one of the first things that we're going to need is going to be some more night slime. Um, I do, I, I technically only need three night slime for this whole project. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and get some of that. So purple, or I love how purple doesn't show up. It's slime. It's just slime ball. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. Um, so I'm going to need to do, I'm going to do two of those and then iron. Good old fashioned iron. Two of those. And then over here, we're gonna need to get, um, how and how many is it gonna be? Let's see. What is that, petrified? Petrified amber. Let's see, petrified amber. Look at that, we have eight. That's exactly how many we're gonna need. So, remember it is one, one, and then four. One pink slime, one iron, and four of the Petrified Amber equals um, a Night Slime. And you're gonna need it in E4, by the way. So, for this, we're gonna need to actually have a Tool Forge, which we made last episode. The Tool Forge shows you everything you need for a yo-yo. You're gonna need two of these uh, parts, you're gonna need an axle. I think these are, what are these called, the body parts? Uh, yeah, the body. So you're gonna need two bodies, and you're also gonna need an axle, and you're gonna need some kind of string. So, for the string, let's take a look at that, um, because we only technically need two casts. We need a body cast, so let's go ahead and do that. We need a cast for the bot. well, we need a patterns for everything. So we need patterns for the cord, we need patterns for the body, and we also need patterns for the axle. Um, but when it comes to the material for the cast, technically we only need it for two things. We need one for the axle, and we need one for the body. Because the, the actual cord, we don't really need one for. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at some other materials. I think we have just about everything minus one. We need to go ahead and make ourselves an alloy. Uh, I think it's from Nuclear Craft. It is this lovely thing right here, this alloy furnace, which is going to require this basic plating, which requires graphite dust. Now, to get graphite dust, you need a manufactory, which takes coal, pulverized coal. And since we have a, a little bit of it, I can go ahead and throw that in the manufactory. And that's going to make ourselves some graphite dust. Um, this is what you're going to use to make that. So within nuclear craft, there is an alloyer. So that way we don't have to alloy anymore with our smelteries. This thing is the way to go. It is super, super handy. Um, you just need a furnace. Make sure we have everything. This plating is the only thing we're going to need. And we're working on that right now. There we go. So go ahead and throw that in. And we should be able to make the plates. We only need four of them right now. And there is our self an alloy furnace. 
Now it tells right here, combines base metals into alloys. Uh, we can go ahead and throw that up here, stack it, why not? This thing can take the upgrades, same upgrades as this one. So we can kind of interchange them if we really want to. It has some redstone control, but we're gonna need a GPS, as always, to just feed this thing some power. So let's go ahead and do that. Why don't we? There we go. Okay, so now that that has that done, I'm going to go ahead and make some Electrum. Actually, I was gonna, gonna see. There is two different materials that we can use for an axle that work very well. Um, you have, I want to use something that has zero friction. And ice gives you a freezing modifier, whereas Electrum gives you a shocking modifier. Now the shocking modifier does something that I kind of don't care for. And that is it changes your FOV um, depending on like, it gives you a speed uh, boost effect. And I'm, I'm not a big fan of this, even though it does give you a higher modifier count. These modifiers kind of don't really matter when you automatically get three modifiers from the start anyways. Um, so if you're playing with base um, Tinker's Construct, that would make sense. But in this case, it doesn't. You just want something with a zero friction. That means this thing is going to spin forever and you won't have to worry about it dying out on you. So I think I'm going to go with ice for the material, which means I technically we don't need this, but I was going to make Electrum in it. I kind of changed my mind on that one, but um, I think ice is going to be the best option for us. And I think we have some. We do. So in that case, I guess the only cast we really need is not the axle, but the body part. Um, and even then we don't really need it because we're going to take some prismarine and we're going to use this for the body part as well. Um, so on one of the body parts, I need this to be prismarine. So material value three, this requires four. So I need four prismarine. The reason I'm using prismarine is because it has a really nice uh, jagged effect and gives you a really nice attack damage. Um, for the axle, we're gonna use ice. Um, it's a cost of two. I don't know if it needs packed ice or what. How is that actually gonna work? Um, axle, ice. Actually, I don't know. That should work, should it not? Maybe it's packed ice that it needs. Hmm, let's take a look, packed ice. Packed ice requires a hydrator. Uh, we can do that. We totally have a hydrator over here. So maybe we can see if it, if that's the case, if this is what it actually needs. If not, then we can, we can go to Electrum. But I bet this thing is requiring packed ice. Yeah, it requires packed ice. Um, so in that case, I could technically flip this from using lava like that, to instead using water, like this, since this thing doesn't require much, and we can get sticks. And I believe it is just one stick, like that, and that will make ice. Yes, that makes ice for us. Okay, so that's that material. We do need the stone body, because like I said, there is another one that we're gonna be using. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do gold for this just to make the cast. So two gold, we'll make a cast. Um, that'll get our cast, and then we're gonna use manulin as our main material. And I think I have some laying around. Yeah, there we go. And this is gonna require four manulin for that process to take place. And that'll be our other part that we get. So uh, we should have three night slime now. So with that going on, we can go over here and actually make our cord. And this is how you're actually going to make the cord is with the material, place it in here, and that will get you the night slime cord. The reason I'm doing this is because this gives you a length of 16, which is absolutely a, a huge distance to be able to, and this is gonna be very helpful for us later on. Um, so with that, we should be pretty good. Um, the last thing we're missing is the ice for our axle, right? We're just missing the ice, which is gonna be very quick here. There we go. That should be enough material for that. 
that should be getting ready to smelt down and that will be the last part that we need for our yo-yo. I hope this really helps you understand how the yo-yo mechanics work. We're gonna go over that whenever uh, we actually get started here. But let's take the packed ice. That should require a material cost of two. Although if it doesn't form right away like that, pull it out, put it back in. It's a little uh, issue going on with that. I don't know why, but that is something that happens. So now that that is done, we pretty much are waiting for this, right? We're waiting for this last piece of manulin to melt up. And then we should have our last part. Oh boy. Um, so with that being talked about, we're going to use this tool to jump into deep mob learning. And there are a few different, there's a few different types of mobs that we can go after. We have slime data modules. We can go after slime if we really want to. We can go after wither skeletons. We can go after endermen. Wither skeletons is probably going to be one of the easiest ones for us to go after. And I, I did go after this um, on the live stream. Blaze is also a pretty easy one to go after as well. Uh, we do need a lot of blaze, uh, blaze matter. But like I said, we can get that through other means. So to be honest, I think I'm probably going to go with the wither skeletons because I think they're going to be the, the, the quickest for me to obtain. And what we need to do is get this thing to self-aware. This thing is going to, it's, that's going to make it the easiest for us to get self-aware. Because I'm going to go over how we're going to do the trial keystone and trial keys today with uh, deep mob learning. And it's, it's very simple once you kind of understand it. And like I said, that's what, that's what I'm here to, here to help with. We're going to go over all of that. We're going to get that all done today. And we're going to get ourselves some glitched armor, which is going to be super cool. So let's go over here. Let's go ahead and build our yo-yo. Now, you can change this up however you want. If you want the green facing you, so be it. Kind of looks like a turtle shell. Or if you want that facing that side. I'm actually going to put the green facing me because I think it gives it a little bit of better look to it. But you can see, by default, this thing does 13.49 attack damage and has three modifier slots available. Now, this thing has the ability to upgrade it like crazy. There are so many different modifiers that you can use for this thing. So... You can, you can add more cord by wool, adding to create, make it longer if you want to. You can make this thing float. And I don't know if this actually brings you higher in the air, but it might. You have something that'll make it act like a shear if you want it to. You just, the the gluey will make it stick to walls and allow you to repel with it. Um, this one right here will pick up items. Like, it's just some crazy stuff. Um, the liquid ink is useful uh, it like makes your yo-yo last longer if you really want to. Um, but ours is infinite at this point. We can actually use this thing. So when we right click, it's going to extend the yo-yo, right? And where your crosshair is, is where the yo-yo uh, head is going to try its best to stay at. And you can see we can go all the way here and you can see it spinning there, right? It's going to continue spinning. Like it's not going to stop because we used ice, which had zero friction. Um, so that will forever continue spinning, <laughs> which is really good. Like having this thing is just like an infinite ranged weapon. Like this thing goes really far. Look how far out that thing goes. So in, and when you right click, it just comes back in. So you right click to throw it like a fishing rod, right click it to bring it back in and you're ready to go. Um, you can see that it doesn't take any durability to reel it in or reel it or pull it back in. It's not like a fishing rod where it takes durability doing that. Where it does take durability damage is when you use it. Uh, when it hits something, that is when it does take some durability damage. And to repair it, you're probably gonna want a repair kit. I don't know if I have a repair kit cast. Um, do I? I have an ingot cast. I don't know if I have a repair kit cast, but what we're gonna want to make is some manulin repair kits and these are going to require two manual ingots a piece to make a repair kit and uh, i say that because this thing will probably run down over time it doesn't have that great of durability um and i think i think if we add like that durability seems really really low is it because of my axle not being the metal i think it is you know what i may just switch it back to shocking I didn't really want to do this, but I think we're going to do it. So gold and silver is how you make electrum. So all we got to do is throw this in here. That's going to produce some electrum. 
I only need a few parts of it. I'm going to swap out the, the axle on this thing. There's no way I'm going to stick with that. Electrum also has a durability or also has a zero friction on it. But yeah, I can, there's no way I'm going to do that. So let's do gold. We need two of those. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves a part. And I'm going to cast, I'm going to cast it out. Yeah. Um, that durability is, seems really, really low. I think the one that I had on the stream was way higher than that. So I'm definitely going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in there. Uh, I think this, actually this, this tool part is only a modifier of two. So it only needs two Electrum. So once that casts out, there it goes. We should only need two pieces. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna replace that. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some quartz. I'm gonna grab some blocks of quartz. Just make some quartz in general. Um, because this is what we're gonna use. So quartz. There we go. Tons and tons of quartz. Um, and did that already cast? There's our electrum piece. Okay. So yeah, if you ever want to swap a part out, you can do so. If say you mess up, you don't have to replace the whole thing. You can place this in and it'll actually swap the part out. And look at that durability. So durability here, 125. Durability here, 1000. It's probably better to put the shocking on it and just deal with the shocking. Um, I think in the options in your video settings, there is a ability to use the um, VOB or VBOS. If you turn that off, I believe it changes your your view settings so that way when you're in speed or whatever it doesn't actually affect your uh your fov uh, but anyways this thing is like a, a way better tool okay not only to mention that while it's in your inventory it'll eventually start glowing and that's because it now has that shocking modifier that is going to go on uh go to it which is really good uh, I, w I really wish we had the freezing effect though but i mean what are you gonna do what are you gonna do uh, let's go ahead and add all of our upgrades to it though. What I want to do is just make this thing as powerful and as potent as possible. So I'm adding as much sharpness as I possibly can to this thing until this thing cannot receive any more sharpness. You can see right here, that thing is full and loaded and now does 16 damage base value. Absolutely insane on the damage. This thing pumps out damage and keeps on going like nobody's business. So let's go ahead and use this thing. First, we need to make a data module. I think we've done this several times. Um, and we're gonna go use, basically we're gonna use a glowing chorus fruit as our main flight to go through stuff. Um, we should have plenty. Uh, glowing chorus fruit is wonderful, by the way, for flight. So I'm gonna go ahead and chow down on some chorus fruit to get all that time built up on our flying meter. Yeah, you gotta love having the gluttony charm. That makes this uh, absolutely insane. Eating all this, like, yep, that's exactly what that looks like. Um, so we have 128 minutes of flight that we can use, and then this thing works while you're flying. Um, and then, like I said, we also need to get that data module. So data model, data model. Am I saying module or model? Data model. Oh, we already have one. Um, and we also need the deep mob learner. So I'm going to put this thing inside the deep mob learner after we give it, I think I have a wither skeleton skull laying around. Of course we do. So put a wither skeleton skull on this thing and we're going to head into the nether to level this bad boy up. We have to get this thing to a higher tier. And the easiest way to do that is to literally fly around the nether killing as many wither skeleton skulls as possible. By the way, this is the shocking that it gives you. So it's glowing. Yeah, that does a little bit of bonus damage. So let's get in there and start killing some wither. So if you keep this thing in your offhand, you should be able to easily take out withers like it's nothing. And also avoid any of the bad guys. Like, look at that, the two shots, like barely, you don't even have to be near it. You just, bam, that's all it takes to take that guy out and it does count. So what, what I have to do is get this thing all the way up to that super high level. 
Um, and to do that, we have to watch that that meter down on the right. When that thing says self-aware, you are done. I think you have to kill close to 100 something or 200 something of the same type of mob. And once you have that done, you, yeah, see it just went to basic. So just keep an eye out on that. By the way, our armor should totally help us. Look at that. We're not taking any damage from fire with this armor on. It is, I mean, it just, this armor is absolutely insane. Um, ooh, while we're here, we can even hit it, hit, hit Enderman with this thing. Like, it, it acts like a sword. It's just, it's just, I, I can't, I can't hype enough about it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and kill a few, and I will be back after I get this thing almost to self-aware. So I figured, since I see a ghast, I might as well do my best to, uh, you know, try and go after it, right? And did I get anything from that? Oh, blast. Typical ghast, just being super stingy and not dropping its tears. Anyways, uh, I have this thing pretty close anyways to the final upgrade. Um, we are at superior, or superior, and we have to literally take out 25 more of these. You can see at this point, this thing is just literally one-shotting these guys at the most part. Um, it's just absolutely insane. <laughs> This yo-yo, uh, the further we get it down, by the way, uh, in durability, Prismarine does more damage. So, the lower this thing gets in durability, the higher the, 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 the damage this thing can do. Uh, which is just why I love Prismarine so much, because usually you're not always having a fully repaired tool in your inventory. So having something that has slight damage on it is absolutely amazing. And then not to mention, we already unlocked two more modifier slots on this because I've leveled it up two times since doing this whole process. And you can just see how fast this is to literally upgrade this thing. So um, I'm literally about to have this thing upgraded to that tier. It's like taking me no time at all. Like <laughs> sometimes they're bunched up together and I can just literally take them all out in one go. Um, so, anyways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get this guy finished up. Um, this data model will be at uh, self-aware. I think I'm on the last one. Because uh, I think superior is right before self-aware. Or maybe it goes from superior to something else. And then I have to figure that out. But still, I'm going to sit here and farm it until I get it done. And then I'll meet you back at the base. So that way we don't run out of time. Because I really want to show how to get that keystone done. That is the main part of today's video, and getting some nice flight glitched armor, which is going to be super awesome. So some key things that we need to go over about this trial key. Here is a platform that is pretty much required for this thing to work. Um, so I went ahead and built a little bit of a platform, just kind of added some support pillars here. Really just using cobblestone and stone, you know, for the, little, the stairs and stuff. Um, but yeah, I kind of removed some of the stuff that was down here. We're going to get this platform sort of cleared out for the most part. This is just going to be like our central walking area so we can travel in between things. And then we're actually going to have multi levels on this. Um, this is actually the first level of this main thing. And then we're going to have more branching things off the side. Um, but this is eventually going to look totally different than what you think it looks right now. Like these, uh, normally I do some nice little builds and I plan on doing the same thing for this one. Um, but let's let's like focus really deep onto this thing. In order for this to say what it says right here, that it's ready, it needs a 15 by 15, so a 15 by 15, and then it needs to be at least 10 tall. So nothing needs to be in there. So if you place a torch in here, it won't work. Um, so you need to make sure that you don't have anything in here except for your key, and then you're gonna be able to you know start this thing. So speaking of keys and how to tune them. So let's go ahead and get a key. The trial key you literally just make like so with some iron, uh, just a few materials, very simple to get these materials. I'm probably gonna run this two times. I think that's probably enough. I'm gonna do three just in case. So I'm gonna make three keys. And remember we have this, uh, this deep learner. We have this wither skeleton data model attuned or set to self-aware. These will not attune just yet, but they will once we actually kill the mob. Now, I do put this in here inside my offhand slot, and I'm going to head back into the nether 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit a mob or kill a mob, and that is going to attune these trial keys. So let's go ahead and do that. So all we gotta do now is literally just hit this guy right here. And you see the trial keys were attuned. So yes, you do have to kill the mob in order for it to work. And then all we gotta do is head back and not die. I don't know why, I guess because this is in our offhand, there's a chance that if uh, you right click, it could mess up. <laughs> but anyways, we now have these set. And when you place this in here, it'll say start trial and this will be the rewards that you get. And we are after the corrupted glitch hearts. Let's go ahead and start this. This is gonna be seven waves long. So keep that in mind. And uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time. This is really cool, by the way. So I am gonna use this. And I'm gonna make sure I stay in this box because you do not wanna leave this area. Wave two, and there, there could be some special effects that actually happen. Um, depending on your trial key, they have different, different things that could happen. So there's things such as knockback and other interesting effects that could all happen. It could be a glitchy wave. Yeah, this yo-yo is just insanely overpowered with Prismarine on it. So we're on wave four. Ow. So there we go. You never know where they're gonna spawn and special things can actually happen. You can actually get a thunderstorm to be caused from doing trials. There we go. We're actually on wave five. Um, if you notice, we do have extra hearts as well that are generated from our armor. So on top of all the resistance and everything else we have, we have extra hearts. There we go. And we're about to get glitch hearts. Now when this this finishes, because I'm gonna do this a couple times. Oh, you see this one actually spawned a blaze. Um, it tells you how many opponents you have left to go per wave. And here's a glitch alert. You need to get rid of this guy. <laughs> And he actually dropped an extra glitch heart. Wow, that was really lucky. And this is our last wave. I wanna kinda of get out of the way. And there we go. What does it say, seven more opponents to go? So yeah, if you don't have armor, you're probably gonna have a hard time fighting off withers, at least in as fast as these guys spawn and like they're spawning right behind you and things like that. Yeah, or right in front of you like just happened to me. And there we go. This is our reward. We get some corrupted glitch hearts. Now, the corrupted glitch hearts work in a weird way. If you read them, um, this is dropped from system glitches, but if you go to deep mob learning, you're gonna look up this stuff right here, the unstable glitch fragments, crafted by crushing a corrupted glitch heart against obsidian, and you left click. So if we get up uh, some obsidian, and we place her down, and we smash these hearts against it, you can see that that six has now turned into 18. And what you want to do with this is take this uh, this unstable fragment and there's a few things we're going to need to do with it. Let's go back to deep mob learning and we're going to look at the ingot. It actually tells you made by uh, stabilizing unstable glitch fragment for more information is found in JEI under the book or guide. Um, so it's going to require lapis, right? It says drop the fragments in lapis, gold ingots, and water with uh with this unstable fragments and that is what is going to generate this for us um, and that's going to eventually make their ingots for our armor and swords and stuff like that so let's go ahead and get us a pool of water we can do this anywhere i'm just gonna 
I guess I can do it over here since we already have a pool of water. So let's grab some lapis. And then also gold. And all you need to do is throw these things in a puddle of water. Together, you'll see some funny particle effects. And voila, you should end up with yourself some glitch infusing it. Now, I'm going to need to farm this a couple more times. Probably one more time, actually, because I only need 24 of these ingots. Um, so I'll probably end up with more. But I'm going to farm this one more time, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to craft that armor and show you what it does. So now that we have enough glitch armor, that last fight was absolutely hectic. Um, like I said, each one of these things have different affixes. Like you see, this one has knockback immunity, speed, and their loot hoarders. I think that was very similar to what I just fought, where they, they had knockback immunity and speed. That one is very tricky. The speed is definitely something that, uh, yeah, oh, nearly got me killed. I think my armor is what kept me alive, which was absolutely amazing. And I did boost this thing with some quartz before I fought, so that might have helped as well. This now is up to 19 attack damage, and I just unlocked another modifier slot, which I technically, if I put some more quartz on here, that thing would be above. But I am going to be saving some more of the, uh, the like, levels. Um, I'm going to save some more modifiers because there are some other cool things that I would love to do with this. So, now that we have that, let's go ahead and craft our actual armor set. So, all you gotta do is craft this beautiful armor. Just like so. It is the same as any other armor. Except, this armor gives you creative flight. So, if we take off our current armor, and we put on this armor, Oh man, it's not really gonna make a difference too much right now, but you can see we look pretty snazzy in our new custom armor. Not as snazzy as we do in our Tinker stuff, um, but like I said, this gives us some flight. I still am debating whether or not this is the best flight, or is it better to keep the other flight going? I don't know. But this way we don't have to worry about chorus fruit. We can always have an armor stand, um, so let's do that. Now, if you use a vanilla armor stand, you can shift right click to pull it out. I don't know if you can do that on the, any of the other armor stands. Let's say we have this armor stand here. I can shift right click and it literally, it even pulls my, I guess my right hand inventory out as well. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Um, and then I can put this on, right? And so what we can do is we can just shift right click on this and it'll swap our armor out. Very convenient. Um, so this armor also gives us an 18% chance to drop two pristine matter uh, when a data module model gains data. So uh, when we're fighting mobs that, and we're learning stuff through the data model, um, we can actually gain extra stuff. And then also we get flight and, and immunity against fall damage. And this stuff is some pretty nice armor, right? It's got some pretty good uh, defense to it, but I don't know if it's as good as this stuff. I don't know. Um, that is to be debated. This gives us a lot of other effects, like having extra hearts is a really nice effect. I'm not going to lie. That is a pretty nice feature. Um, so I hope you guys learned something new today. I know that was a bit of an interesting episode with a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of tougher mechanics that are going on. Um, and I hope you, I hope you guys were able to keep up with that, but technically I know we still have a flight timer at the top, right? But this does give you creative flight without having that flight timer. So you do not have to worry about that thing up there. Um, but having that timer is also nice though, in case you do something like this. Oops, I took my armor off. I still have armor. Or if you die or something like that, it's always nice to have a timer up there. So that way you always have something to fall back on. But anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video guys a huge, thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.